Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kaladi and today we have Laura Marie from Paris, Friends on the show. Welcome Laura, how are you? Hey, I'm perfect, thank you. So tell me Laura, how does someone go from having a career in the pharmaceutical industry to becoming a certified health and fitness coach and I must say, an amazing writer? Well, thank you very much. Well, my journey has been very untypical. I have not been into sports before. I was, like you just said, a secretary and an assistant to general managers for like seven years. I've worked in different types of jobs. I had like about 30 different jobs before I became a personal trainer. And... Um, Something really, uh, something uh, really cool happened while I was in uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. It's that thing is that I have been fired. So that seemed very oh, you know that can seem very um, something scary at the beginning when that happened. But uh, everything happens for a reason, and that's where that's when my real journey, my real purpose happened. Um, I was working in that uh, in the pharmace pharmaceutical industry, and then I went to the bank, financial financial banking industry, and um, I had a great job. I had great compliments on my work. Everything was perfect. I was pretty happy with my work, but I know deep inside, I knew deep inside that I was made to do something else and to do something with a greater purpose. But I'm, I was always somebody that was very conscious about my work and very professional. So I already had, you know, uh, great compliments on my work. But in that bank, I, there was this, this man who was, um, um, how do you say in English, misogyne, misogyne, mm -hmm. you know, man that doesn't like women. And in this bank, he was very famous for that. And each time he met a successful woman in his company, he, wanted, he made everything possible to fire her. And so I have been a victim of that, but this is truly a gift. And he did that to other women. So the most successful woman in the company, he would make everything to fire them. So I have been through this uh, process of being fired. And so that was, like I said, the biggest gift that I had because then I, I had the opportunity to pursue my real passion, which was health and fitness. And so I started this new career. And I was not the only, the only woman who have been, you know, a victim of this. And the other one unfortunately didn't take this opportunity whereas she was unhappy in this uh, job too but she didn't take this opportunity to create something new and she got into depression and I tried to help her but you know that's why your attitude towards life is really important and I think we're going to talk about it later but so I, yeah, I took this opportunity to bring so something new and I created my own company which is the best thing I, I ever did. And now I make it grow. And, and yeah, so I became a certified personal trainer. I work on my writings and I really, now I create everything the way I want. I don't depend on anybody and I make my own business and I spread my own ideas and yeah, it's awesome. And I help others. <laughs> You share on your website that you grew up in a family where love and emotion were not expressed at all. Today you write very openly about your emotions and inspire others through your experiences in life. This takes a lot of courage. Was it hard for you to open up and speak so freely about your emotions? Yeah, um, when I was little, I, yeah, I, I, like for example, I can't remember having hugs from my parents or you know, kiss good night, or I love, I never heard I love you, like, never. And so, um, but that doesn't mean my parents didn't love me, but they were not expressive people. And now it has changed a lot. Now that 
I opened up myself. I taught them by example how to do it, and because they they were they were like that because they didn't have it from their parents, and so it took me years to understand that they couldn't give it to me because they didn't have it themselves, and I shouldn't blame them for that for all this, but instead help them. And now we have a great great relationships, and they are really open. They say. I love you to me and and you know um, I think this is great when you can forgive people and be, and be, become more under, understanding because they didn't do it on purpose parents always do their best with what they have and that's what we have to understand and that's not because we are their children that we should be like always demanding and waiting for something we can be the one who uh, who give them something and teach them something and so yeah i think you said it took me a lot of courage yes and also it took me a lot of work i did on myself and not counting on anybody else to provide me the love i needed i looked for it and I built it myself and the more I gave to others the more actually I received so it's not when you want to receive and then you whole you you don't give anything and then you expect others to give love to you it's only if you give yourself that you will receive back as part of your journey you completely changed your nutrition in order to lose weight you went from eating McDonald's and having high cholesterol levels to being fit and healthy. Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so um, all my childhood I suffered from low, self low self-esteem and um, being a little bit overweight. I'm not going to say I was very fat, but I was just fat enough to make me feel un uncomfortable and to, for others to make fun of me at school. So I think this is very, a very um, big trauma when you are a kid and others are making fun of you. Like, for example, uh, like my schoolmates, they, we were drawing each other and this, my schoolmate, you know, it draws me with a big circle and my girlfriend, like a tiny little. <laughs> and so this is something that really stayed in my mind and uh, when, when I grew up and I always saw myself like this fat kid and even if I was not that fat but you know what counts is the way you see yourself and so I try to um, to find ways to uh, lose weight when I was uh, about 20 in my tw early 20s like maybe 22 23 I started to become really interested in health fitness and how to change because I finally understood it was not fate and I could change. It was not like I had a, a punishment and I had to stay like that all my life. I had the power to change this. And um, I looked at my food and I, I understood that my food was the problem. I had no idea before that food uh, could be that bad or... or especially junk food and all the high fat, high sugary food I was eating. I was eating McDonald's like three to four times a week. And uh, this is crazy. And now when I think about it, this is crazy. But this is not that crazy because many people still do this. So that's, that's, that's why I think I can be a good world, mo world model for this because I've not been always... You know, healthy, and so I understand when my clients tell me I eat McDonald's three times a week. I understand. I I cannot judge them and think they're stupid or crazy because I've done the same. So um, I had a very high cholesterol level, although I was in my early twenties and um, bad skin. Yeah, everything was uh, bad and low energy and. Uh, and so I learned by myself. I've read tons of books, like websites, 
going through the internet, looking for resources, and I really, really learned a lot of things by myself first, be before becoming a personal trainer. I first became passionate, and I think that's the most important thing, because if you do this job and you're not passionate, you do because, oh, I don't know what to do, this is not the same. You're not going to touch people the same way. So I, for like maybe three years, I studied myself on my side. You know, I was working in a bank or in the pharmaceutical industry, and then as soon as I came home, I was reading, even at work sometimes, I admit, I was so pas passionate, I would, for my lunch, during my lunchtime or even during my, my, my uh, day job, I was going through websites and reading stuff about nutrition and fitness. I was so passionate. And I was dreaming maybe one day I, I, would, I would be doing this. You know, I was looking at fitness models or fitness experts, and I was, you know, secretly daydreaming one day I would, I would do that. And, and I've come to realize that each time I really want something, this, this happens. I mean, visualize, visualizing is really important. And each time I visualize something I really want, it actually happens. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are a dedicated student of health and well-being. You mentioned the importance of re reconnecting with our uh, intuition and true feelings. What does that mean? How do you go about that? Um, for example, while, while I was working, you know, in the bank or in in the pharmaceutical um, industry, I always knew deep inside that I was meant to do something else, and I couldn't really. Explain express it to others because other people cannot understand that they think you are dreaming or that's just you know you're being a topic or so I learned that I shouldn't share it too much with others but I should really listen to my intuition like I said each time I've, I've wanted something and knew deep inside I should do something or something was gonna happen it it did so I learned through time that my intuition never never lied to me and that's what I'm teaching people also through my life coaching uh, lessons is to reconnect with their true self their intuition because it never lies to to them whereas society lies to you TV lies to you people lie to you everybody Everything around us is like an illusion, but inside of us, um, we know the real, the real stuff, the, the truth, what we are meant to be, and it's never a dream, it's really a calling from your soul, actually. You talk not only about the body, but about mind, body, and soul. How important is it to find balance between the, these three? Yes, uh, great question. <laughs> um, you know, at first, I was, like I said, very unhappy about my physique, unhappy about my self-esteem, the way I was, you know. Um, yeah, but it was more based about my physical appearance. So I made everything possible to change my physical appearance. And I became a fitness model, which was, for me, a huge accomplishment because people telling me, oh, you, you inspire me with your physique when you come from a place where... You hate yourself, basically. Uh, you know, when I was little, I was writing in my journal every day, I wa I'm fat, I want to die. And so now being an inspiration for others, this is really an awesome feeling and a great accomplishment and a proof that we really can become everything we want to be. Because if I had, if I told this little girl, like this, 10 years old or 14 years old girl right now that she would become this I mean she would not believe me and this is I think um, an important thing for people to understand that they create their reality so as far as the mind body and spirit um, mind body and soul concept is concerned um, I guess through my journey of physical um, transformation, I've also learned that everything comes from the mind. 
too, and it's not only, only about physical because if you only work on your physic, then that's why people gain the weight back because they didn't change their mind. So as soon as their diet is, is ending or they stop training because they haven't understood that you don't train only to have a good physic, you train for your health, for your mental health. And so um, that's why the three of, of them are very important because if you neglect, neglect one aspect, uh, you're not going to be happy. If you, that's why so many models, like I'm not talking about little models, like t top models are very unhappy sometimes because only the physical appearance cannot make you happy because you need to have a sense of purpose and you need to accomplish yourself and actualize, be self-actualized with your soul's purpose and um, help others, like feeling a sense of contrib contrib contribution and um, feeling that you are useful in this planet. Otherwise, you feel empty and just being be beautiful, it doesn't last because ultimately you're not going to be beautiful in the end. I mean, the kind of beauty we talk about in society because beauty in society is being young, is being lean, is being no wrinkles, is being sexy, that means being attractive to male. This is what beauty is, but real beauty is not this. And um, ultimately, you're not going to be always beautiful. I mean, yes, you're going to be, but not like society um, tells us and teaches us. So you're, ultimately, you're going to become unhappy if everything, um, like if the most important thing for you is staying young and you're going to go through surgery, you're going to... And this isn't going to make you unfulfilled and looking for happiness in all the wrong places. Okay, so mind, body and soul goes together. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> okay. Many women follow a strict diet for a short while and then fall back into their old habits. You share your thoughts on the importance of dropping bad and negative habits on your blog. How big of a role do habits play in achieving good health? Yes, um, habits. Okay, um, I think first, before becoming a habit, it has to become a belief. Like, if you force yourself to have the habit of eating healthy, it's not really going to work because you don't believe in it. And as soon as you understand that it's good for you, it's, it's not even hard anymore to for it to become a habit because it's like um, you believe you have to dress you know to go out so you don't have to think about having this habit because this is something you believe you have to do and so uh, this is the same for food once you believe that it's good for you once you understand it's important for you this is going to be automatically become a, a habit and you won't have to think about it and force yourself. And so, um, yeah, I think the most important thing is to understand that you doing, you're, doing it, you're doing it for yourself first and it, that it's good for you. And once you understand, it's going to be easy. You, know, you won't have to struggle and to, um, to force yourself to do it. Forming a new habit can take quite a bit of time, right? Yes. Uh, Actually, do, no. science, science says that we need only 21 days. Uh, how do you stay motivated when things get uh, tough? Uh, regarding diet? Yeah. Okay. Or regarding something that you would like to achieve, but... Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, first, for diet. I understand that sometimes we are tempted to eat you know, unhealthy stuff because they taste good, so that's normal. And especially when we are going through emotions. For example, me, um, 
I'm tempted to eat when I'm stressed out, when I'm sad, or when I'm happy, really happy. It's like I want to celebrate and I want to eat, you know, good stuff and and sometimes unhealthy stuff like a pizza or, because I'm so happy and I love life and for me food is like something it's something to love and not something to see as our enemy or as you know something like that so I think for me what works the most and for my clients too because this is my method is to eat clean all all week long and then on the weekend choosing one day or one meal to eat whatever you want and so that's how I stay motivated because I I one week goes very fast times go goes very fast so we are Monday and then suddenly we are Friday and it's the cheat meal so it's not hard you know when you do the, this because you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to celebrate and it's not about eating unhealthy food but it's about having the opportunity to you know, relax and be with your family or your friends and not think about food like like you usually do. But um, it's not hard for me because I never want to go back to that person I was before. So I'm not frustrating to eat healthy. I'm not uh, unhappy about it. I'm really happy to know that this food is good for me and this food is good for my shape. So... I don't blame I don't blame dieting I don't blame the fact that I have to eat healthy I mean it's super cool and it's 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 like you have all the tools for you to become who you want to be and then you're going to complain that you have to do this this is like a gift that you know how to you know you know how to maintain a great shape and you know how to be healthy so there's nothing to complain about and all this unhealthy food were, was created with, um, by, you know, um, food companies that don't want our highest good at all. They just want to make profit and that, that's why they make 30 different lemonades with 30 different colors and it's just for profit. It's not for our health and then we are tempted, we are in the supermarket, but actually each time I, I go to the supermarket, are really good for us in this whole supermarket it's like crazy because it's a little part of the supermarket that food that we should really eat and uh, all the rest is only packaging and colors and and things that we don't need so I stay motivated by reminding me of my of how I feel how good I feel when I when I do what I when I do what I'm supposed to do and how bad I feel when I don't do it. And actually when you um, get the habit of eating healthy, as soon as you eat unhealthy you get sick. Really. I get sick after each cheat meal. Like yesterday I went to the Cheesecake Factory <laughs> because my family came to visit me in here in Los Angeles. So they arrived on on Sunday, and so we wanted to celebrate yesterday, and we went to the cheesecake factory. But then I got sick yesterday, and I just ate half half of an hamburger, half of it, not even the whole hamburger, and I got sick. And now I'm disturbing you with the interview. Why? You are sick, or you are? Oh no, yesterday, but then then that's okay. Now I'm okay today. Uh. <laughs> This morning I had my omelette and my rice cake and I'm better. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to exercise for like one hour and a half this afternoon and I'm going to be perfect. Oh, great. <laughs> great. But see, you, your body rejects the bad food yeah. once you're used to the good food. So it's not hard to eat healthy because you, you just won't be able to eat unhealthy again. I agree. Over the last five years or so, you have completely changed your life. If you had the chance to go back in time and spend a few minutes with your younger self, what would you tell that little girl? I would say, I would tell her that she has the power to create everything she wants in her life beyond her wildest dreams. And 
I consider myself only in the beginning of my journey of what I want to accomplish because I have many, many goals, many big dreams. And I'm not being pretentious to say that, but I know I'm going to realize them because what I'm doing right now, I've been visualizing it five years ago. And exactly, it happens exactly the same way as I had it in my head. Truly, really with the details and everything. And now I already have the vision for my life two to five years from now. Like I have everything in my head, the actual images. And, and so I know that this is going to happen because I'm creating it right now with my visions, vision boards, um, and my work. Because every day, my philosophy is that every day I'm, I'm doing something towards my goal. Like, I don't want to go to bed without having done something that's going to bring me closer to my goal. I never go to bed without having done something. This is, I'm, I'm not going through life like this, you know, I'm just existing and I'm not living, I'm really building something. Each day I, I have goals in my head and each day I'm doing something towards them. And can you share some of your goals with us? I'm sorry? Can you oh, share? So my, so my, my, yeah. Uh, wow, <laughs> the list is very long. Uh, first, First one, I'm, I'm doing a school, a marketing school in, in, that's going to start in about one week. Uh, I want to be, become also an expert in, in, in marketing and in social medias and internet, online presence, and because I'm really passionate about internet too. I'm what we can call a multi-passionate woman. So sometimes it's hard to really focus on something and because I have so many ideas at the same time. But uh, I, know, I know I'm passionate about health and fitness, but also about entrepreneurship. And I've built my company by myself. And um, so now I want to take it to the next level. I want to reach more people. And for that, I need a training in marketing and in business, you know, and um, so once I've, I've become an expert in that, I want to um, also help, uh, like maybe in four or five years from now. This is a project I have to teach other women how to, you know, empower them to become entrepreneurs, especially I think in France because we don't have that. I think I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I'm living here in the States between Los Angeles, uh, offer uh, French people a train, um, you know, become a mentor for French, pe French women because we don't have that in France. So I want to bring the knowledge I, I will have learned in the States to France because they don't have it. And um, um, I want also to... Um, um, emphasize, 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 you understand? Yeah. Emphasize <laughs> more uh, the life coaching aspect of my work. Right now, I've been focusing more on health and fitness, and it's great. I have many clients from all over, all over, all over the world. <laughs> but now I want to really develop my life coaching business. Uh, you and will be great. So Thank you, because I really want to help and empower women, you know, to, it's, I think my philosophy would be fall in love with your body and fall in love with your life. I want to help women fall in love with their lives, because when you're in love with your life, nothing can stop you, not even if you have one pound, five pounds or if you, your boyfriend make you angry or if your family is not always supportive. Because you're in love with your life. So nothing can stop you. When you have a purpose, when you have a mission and you're committed to it, it's like the whole world can do whatever it wants. You're, you're, you'll be happy because your happiness is inside of you. And that's what I want to teach women. I agree. Oh, great. <laughs> Out of all the things you've done and accomplished in your life this far, what are you most proud of? 
I think the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that I follow, always followed my heart. Despite all the criticize I got, or all, all the um, um, fun I had from others, you know, oh, you're gonna do this? Like, for example, when I first started to train and got, got into fitness, like all my friends, especially in France, we are not open to fitness, like in the States, we don't see muscular women, we don't see women with abs, and so as soon as I started to train, people were like, oh, you're going to become, you're going to look like a man, you're going to, oh, you're going to, you, I mean, it was, it was very, very unsupportive, and uh, I didn't care at all. I mean, I, I was just polite, and, but, but continue my, my thing, and now all these people are congratulating me because of my, of my accomplishments. And I think this is the most important thing, to always follow your heart and your intuition, like we said. So this is the thing I am most proud of, because if I didn't do that, I, w I wouldn't be happy as I am right now. Yeah, and now I'm inspiring others, actually, because um, I did it. I listened to myself and not to them, and so they actually were taught kind of a lesson through that <laughs> and now maybe they're gonna do the same for themselves. What is the best place for people to connect with you online? Um, I think my website is the first place to go, lauramarietv.com. Then you have the links to all my social medias. So the best way to, uh, to keep in touch with me is to subscribe to my newsletter, which I'm sending every Tuesday to my subscribers. So every Tuesday I'm sending tips and articles and stories I'm going through to illustrate the teachings I'm giving. And people are really liking it. I'm really having great feedback and my list is growing uh, each and every week. And so this is really cool. And um, I'm answering also questions from my readers. So if people have questions, I'm answering it on Tuesdays through my newsletter. So it's, I'm starting to build a great community there. So that's cool. That's great. <laughs> I will make sure to put uh, all the links below this video. Thank you. You're most Thank welcome. You. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to share uh, with our viewers? Um, I think we've covered a lot today, but the um, main message for them to remember is that they already are beautiful the way they are. They can always improve, but they have to understand that first they have to love themselves for other people to love them back because until you love them yourself, you, know, you cannot be happy. Even if you're the most beautiful girl on the planet, if you don't love yourself, you're going to be unhappy. And that's why there are women that are not necessarily happy, um, beautiful like society um, uh, determines it, but they love themselves. So they radiate a light and they look beautiful and uh, this is the main message I think you have to love yourself and believe in yourself and to believe in yourself you have to start doing things you know if you are like how am I gonna love myself how am I gonna believe in myself but this is through action that you can actually um, become more um, having more self-esteem and if you only wait to have more self-esteem you're not gonna have it. You have to do and sometimes do some mistakes, but do some work, actions, and then little by little you're gonna be better. You know, we all start as beginners. Like when I started to train, I was like everybody else. I had no muscles, I had not a flat stomach, and then I started little by little, week by week, month by month. I never lost my enthusiasm and my passion and ultimately I became who I am now and I'm happy about the results and that's why now I want to show people that they can do the same really like everybody can change this is not about your genetics this is not about 
black or whatever. You are making yourself every day with each and every thought, with each and every word you say, and with each and every action you make. Thank you so much, uh, Laura, You're for uh, sharing your story on the show. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you. Thank you very you're much. Most, you're most welcome. My Thanks. name is Miriam Kaladi, and I will see you on the next episode of Real Talk, Real Women. <laughs>